Ah, we are on the air and welcome to Real Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. This is the moment of the powerful she. And you know what? Last night I was reading a book. It's called The Powerful Female Immigrants. And one story stood out before I dozed off. Marisa, welcome. Thank you so much, Lisa. You are a powerful she. And I am so happy that I get to see you today and you are sitting here. By all means, from what I read, you are one of the powerful she's that I consider the courage, bravery, empowerment, and becoming a leader that you are, not only in the healthcare, but in being in real estate, and starting from where you are, from no English to becoming such a fluent. Welcome. Thank you so much. Those are so kind words. And, um, you know, when you recap that whole life and the whole struggles into those sentences, it just makes it look like flawless. Definitely was not flawless. Of course <laughs> it was not flawless. Vulnerable, so it, um, thank you so much for acknowledging that. I appreciate it. It was not flawless because it was an experience of years. And you're even getting emotional. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing that you can see yourself through a different lens mm -hmm. and realize someone is speaking about me. Yeah. That's yeah. who I am. That's pretty awesome. Thank you. I did. Yeah. I know that. I mean, yeah, it's just, it just catches me up. Right. Thank you so much for making the time to read and congratulations for also being in, in this environment and encouraging and empowering women. Thank you for all the work that you do. Of course. So coming to America, you know, there is a whole movie about it. There is everything about it. What was the one thing I remember you saying when I came to America, I was like, I opened the curtains and it was like, I am in the land. And at that very moment, I'm going, wow, you unveiled something bigger. People are not seeing what I see, but you unveiled your, what we call it manifesting, your true core of this is who I am you welcome you so tell us the story so yeah the thing that part of you're referring to on opening the curtains is when uh, after arriving after midnight and the bus station and didn't know how to find my way to get a hotel I didn't have anyone to contact the person that I was supposed to contact was off and the restaurant was closed so I suddenly found myself in a different country all by myself and couldn't really communicate what I needed. What I needed was a safe place to sleep. Mm. Um, so I found a hotel and in the morning, I was exhausted traveling, I don't know, like 18 hours on a bus. So I just crashed. Coming from? From Tampico, uh, Mexico, Mexico. Uh, Tampico, Tamaulipas. So yeah, I woke up and I opened the curtain and this, this like, uh, the view, like a lot of infrastructure, which is not like Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, just beautiful cars, like people, there was no people really walking. Everybody was on cars. There was this just methodical, you know, you go, you stop. There was no noise compared to Mexico City. It was a clean look. And to me, it was like, I'm in a different land, in a land that I don't know what's out there. It's, it was the unknown day number one. Because from there on, I didn't know what was gonna happen the next day, and the next day, and the next day. All I knew is that I needed to make my mom, mom proud. That was my, that's been always my drive. I, whatever I did today, tomorrow, when she hears about it, I want her to be proud of, of my decisions. And two, I just wanted to explore, and uh, I have put all my savings for two and a half years to come to the States. And what I had was $100. Mm -hmm. But it, that was that was physical. That's what I had in, in cash. But what I had in my my head, in my heart, is it was a dream that I had. It was no limits. When you look at the sky, right behind us, there's no limits. That's what I saw when I opened that curtain. And yeah, that that was that was my day one of not knowing what was gonna happen next day. And since then, you went to pursue your career and you have the career, you landed the career, you went higher from nursing, from higher to anesthesia. You know, as a clinical hypnotherapist, I do self-hypnosis and I can have root canals. Uh, we do wow. knee replacement, hip replacement, uh, hypnobirthing with absolutely no anesthesia. So as an anesthesiologist, 
when a patient is laying there and literally their life is in your hands more than the surgeon isn't that amazing for someone who says i don't know who i am to be in a place that i have total life and opportunity in the palm of my hand you know um when i see my patients i see many of them in the most, most vulnerable physically and, and mentally vulnerable to the to the fear of the unknown. Most people, I think the biggest fear maybe of other than speaking in public is to have surgery or to go under anesthesia. They don't know what the difference is, they just know that they're gonna be red unconscious. So many times I have anywhere between 30 seconds to three minutes to gain their confidence and to show them that I am the person that is going to protect not only their lives, but the whole environment. They're gonna be physically exposed, not because I am gonna cover you. I'm gonna preserve your dignity no matter what. So in, those, in that short amount of time, I have to let them lead that message. And you know, coming from uh, in, in, a, in a field that is dominated by white, Male, uh, in being a minority, and I'm sure if you if I'm if I'm standing, I'm sure. So a lot of the times, and, and you know, when you're in the hospital, all you have is eyes, so you can't tell eyes at the age on the eyes. So most people just assume that I'm there to clean their bed or, or, or some other <laughs> as version. So when I start speaking my language, which is explaining why I'm gonna how I'm gonna take care of them, um, it's such a comfort and feeling for me to have their trust and they turn around and they just pull my hand and they convey that they're trusting me and that's that's such a gift it's exactly normal. so in to wrap it i want to say i believe when you opened the curtain you felt safe being here and through all your challenges and all the courage and now that you're empowering so many others through being a part of this book you keep your patients safe as well. And may God bless you for the work that you do. And I thank you for being thank you a so part much, of the Lisa. powerful she because that's who you are. Thank you so Until much. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. Thank you, my Lucy. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I can't believe you read it. Like, oh, yes, yeah, she knows exactly when. <laughs>